Chapter sixty eight of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Paradiso seventeen. The fifth heaven, Mars. The happiness of heroism foreknowledge and freedom dante's exile and first refuge as that one came to clymene who still to sons makes fathers cherry to be sure of that which he had heard against himself even such was i and such was felt to be by beatrice and by the holy lamp who first on my account had changed his place wherefore my lady said to me express thy wishes ardour so that it may issue clearly impressed by its internal stamp not that our knowledge may the greater grow by words of thine but that thou mayst get used to tell thy thirst that we may pour thee drink o oh, my dear root that so dost lift thyself that as terrestrial minds perceive that no triangle holds two angles which are both obtuse thou likewise gazing at the point to which all things are present dost perceive contingent things ere in themselves they are while i by virgil was accompanied upward around the mount which healeth souls and downward through the region of the dead grave words were told me of my future life although indeed i feel myself four square against the blows of fortune my desire would hence contented be were i to hear what kind of fortune is approaching me for slower comes an arrow when foreseen thus to that light i spoke which had before addressed me and as beatrice had willed so was my wish confessed not in vague terms in which the foolish folk of old were wont to get entangled ere the lamb of god who taketh sins away was put to death but with clear words and unambiguous speech that father's love replied which by its smile was both concealed and rendered manifest contingence which outside your matter's volume doth not extend is in the eternal vision wholly depicted yet it taketh not necessity therefrom save as a ship while down a current moving doth from eyes which mirror it therefrom as from an organ sweet harmony attains one's ears the time which is for thee preparing strikes my sight as through his false and cruel stepmother hippolytus left athens so must thou leave florence this is willed already this is sought and soon will be achieved by him who meditates it there where every day christ is both bought and sold as usually the blame will be imputed to the wronged in public outcry but revenge for it will witness to the truth dispensing it thou shalt abandon all that thou hast loved with greatest tenderness and of its shafts this is the one which exiles bow shoots first thou shalt find out how salt another's bread is wont to taste and what a painful thing is going up and down another's stairs but what will bow thy shoulders most will be the bad and foolish company with whom thou fall into this vale for all ungrateful mad and malevolent will it become against thee but soon thereafter it 
not thou will have its forehead red with blood its deeds will furnish proof of its bestiality hence well becoming will it be for thee to have made thyself a party by thyself thy earliest refuge and first lodging place shall be the courtesy of that great lombard who on the ladder bears the holy bird and who will have for thee such kind regard that tween you two in doing and in asking that will be first which is with others last with him the man thou see who was when born so stamped by this strong star that notable will be his deeds by reason of his youth the nations are not yet aware of him for only nine years have these wheels revolved around him but before the gascon cheat the noble henry sparks of his character will manifest themselves by disregard sparks of his character will manifest themselves by disregard for money or for toil and so well known will his munificence hereafter be that even his enemies will not be able to still their tongues at it on him rely and on his favours many will be changed because of him the rich and those that beg exchanging states and written on thy mind shalt thou bear hence but shalt not tell it here he told me things incredible to those who shall be present then he added son glosses are these on what was said to thee behold the snares which lie concealed behind not many circlings of the sun and yet i would not have thee envious toward thy neighbours because thy life far longer will extend than will the punishment of their bad faith when by his silence that blessed soul had showed that he was through with weaving in the woof of that same web which i had given him warp then i began like one who doubting longs for counsel from a man who both perceives wills righteously and loves i clearly see my father how toward me a time spurs on to deal me such a blow as heaviest is to him who gives least heed to it tis therefore well that i should so with foresight arm myself that if the place which is to me most dear be taken from me i lose not the rest by these my verses downward through the world whose bitterness is endless and around the mount from whose fair top my lady's eyes have lifted me and afterward through heaven from light to light things have i heard which if repeated will for many have the taste of bitter herbs and yet if i'm to truth a timid friend i fear lest life i lose with those who shall of this age speak as ancient the light wherein that treasure smiled which there i found sparkled at first as in a sunbeam a golden mirror would and then replied a conscience gloomy either with its own or with another's shame will feel indeed the harshness of thy words yet none the less all falsehood having been removed from it cause thy whole vision to be manifest and where the itch is let the scratching be for if when tasted first thy voice shall prove offensive it will after leave behind it when once digested vital nourishment this cry of thine will do as doth the wind which strikes the loftiest summits most 
and this will no slight honour prove hence only souls well known to fame were shown thee in these heavens upon the mount and in the woeful vale because the mind of him who hears rests not nor strengthens its belief by illustrations based upon what is hidden and unknown or by an argument that is not clear paradiso eighteen the fifth heaven mars the spirits of heroes the sixth heaven jupiter the happiness of justice that blessed mirror was enjoying now its thoughts alone and i was tasting mine tempering their sweetness with their bitterness when that same lady who was leading me to god said change thy thought recall that near i am to who unburdens every wrong i turned me at my comfort's loving voice and in her holy eyes what kind of love i then beheld i here refrain from saying not only since mine own words i distrust but since my mind cannot return so far above itself unless another guide it this only of that moment can i tell that my affection while i gazed at her was freed from longing for all other things as long as joy eternal which directly shone on beatrice with its reflected aspect was from her lovely face contenting me conquering me with the splendour of a smile she said turn round and hark for paradise is not exclusively within my eyes as her affection here is seen at times upon our countenance if such it be that our whole spirit is thereby absorbed so in the flaming of the blessed effulgence to whom i turned i recognized his wish to have a little further talk with me in this fifth threshold of the tree it then began which from its summit draws its life always bears fruit and never loses leaves of blessed spirits who before they came to heaven enjoyed so great a fame below that every muse would be thereby enriched gaze therefore at the cross's arms and he whom i shall name will there perform the act which in a cloud its own swift fire performs i saw a splendour drawn along the cross at joshua's name the moment it was uttered nor did i note the name before the deed and at great maccabeus name i saw another spirit whirling as he moved and gladness was the whip that turned the top likewise at charlemagne's and roland's names my gaze intently followed two of them as doth a falconer's eye his flying bird then william afterward and renoart duke godfrey next and robert guiscard drew my sight along that cross and then moving and mingling with the other lights the soul which had addressed me showed how great an artist among heaven's choristers he was round to my right i turned me to behold in beatrice my duty signified by speech or act and i beheld her eyes so joyous and so clear that what she seemed surpassed her other and her latest wont and as because of feeling more delight in doing good a man from day to day perceiveth that his virtue is increasing even so on seeing that that miracle was fairer now i noticed that the arc of my revolving with the heavens had grown and 
has within a little space of time a lady turneth white whene'er her face rids itself of the burden of its shame such to mine eyes the change when i had turned through the white colour of the temperate sixth star which had received me in itself i saw within that jovial torch of light the sparkling of the love contained in it shaping our language forth before mine eyes and even as birds on rising from the shore as if in gratulation at the food they found form groups now round and now of other shapes thus holy creatures in those lights were singing as here and there they flew and with their forms made of themselves now d now i now l each singing to its note they moved at first then on becoming one of these same letters they stopped a little while and silent kept oh thou divine Pagasian muse that glorious dost make men's genius and dost render it long-lived as it through thee doth towns and realms so shed thy light on me that i may here describe their figures even as i perceive them in these brief verses let thy power appear they then displayed themselves in consonants and vowels five times seven and as their parts seemed to be said to me i noted them diligite justiciam were first verb and noun of all that was depicted there qui judicates terram were the last then in the fifth words m they so remained arranged that jupiter seemed silver there pricked out with gold and other lights i saw descend upon the summit of the m and rest there singing i believe the good which draws them to itself then as when logs are struck while burning endless sparks fly up whence fools are wont to draw their auguries more than a thousand lights appear to rise and upward move some much and some a little even as the sun which setteth them on fire allotted them and when they quiet were each in its place an eagle's head and neck i saw portrayed by that outstanding fire he who paints there hath none to be his guide but is his own guide and from him derives the instinct which is formative in nest the other blessed ones who at first appeared content to form a lily on the m went slowly on to shape the eagle's form o oh, gentle star what and how many gems proved to me that our justice here results from that heaven's influence which is gemmed by thee i therefore pray the mind wherein thy motion and virtue start that it may so regard the source whence comes the smoke which spoils thy rays that it may now a second time be wroth with sale and purchase in that temple's court whose walls were built with blood and martyrdom o oh, soldiers of the heaven i contemplate pray ye for those that are on earth all gone astray behind the bad example there war was once carried on with swords but now by taking here and there that bread away the pitying father keepeth locked from none but thou that writest but to cancel think that peter and paul who for that vineyard died 
which thou art laying waste are still alive where well, mayest thou say so set is my desire on him whose will it was to live alone and for a dance was led to martyrdom that i know neither fisherman nor paul paradiso nineteen the sixth heaven jupiter the happiness of justice inscrutability of god's justice unjust princes before me now with wings outspread appeared the lovely image which in sweet fruition those joyous interwoven spirits made each one of them a little ruby seemed wherein a ray of sunlight burned so brightly that it was mirrored back into mine eyes and what i now must needs relate no voice hath e'er reported nor hath ink inscribed nor hath imagination ever grasped for i both saw and heard the beak converse and utter in its voice both i and my when in its meaning it was we and our and it began because of being just and merciful i'm to a glory raised up here which doth not let itself be won by more desire and such a fame i left on earth that evil people there commend it but fail to follow its recorded works as out of many embers one sole heat makes itself felt so from that image formed by many loves a single voice came forth hence hide thereafter o oh, perpetual flowers of joy eternal who let all your odours seem only one to me by breathing break the painful fast which long hath given me hunger for i on earth have found no food for it well do i know that even if in heaven justice divine makes of another realm its looking-glass yours apprehends it not through any veil ye know with what attention i girt myself to listen and ye know the doubt which is so old a fast for me and as a falcon from his hood set free tosses his head and flapping his proud wings displays his eagerness and plumes himself such i beheld the symbol which is weaved by praises of the grace divine become with songs which who up there rejoices knows it then began he who his compass turned around the world's last verge and in it parted its many hidden things from those revealed was not so able to impress his virtue on all the world that his conceived ideal should not remain in infinite excess and this assures one that the first proud being who greater was than all created spirits through not awaiting light untimely fell it hence results that every lesser nature is but a scant recipient for the good which hath no end and measures self by self your vision therefore which must needs be one of that mind's rays wherewith all things are filled of its own nature cannot be so strong that it should not perceive its source as being far greater than is all that it can see the vision therefore which your world receives into eternal justice penetrates as doth an eye into the sea because though it perceive its bottom near the shore when on the deep it sees it not yet there it is but its great depth conceals it that is not light which comes not from the sky which never clouds itself but rather darkness a shadow of the flesh or else its poison sufficiently disclosed to thee is now the hiding place which once concealed from thee the living justice which so frequently it was thy wont to question 
for thou saidst, A man is born upon the Indus banks, with no one there to speak of Christ, or read, or write, and all his actions and desires are good, as far as human reason sees, and without sin in either life or speech. Then, unbaptized and without faith, he dies. Wherein consists the justice which condemns him? Where is his fault if he believeth not? Now who art thou that as a judge would sit to judge of things a thousand miles away with the short vision of a human span? Surely for him who subtly strives with me were not the scriptures ruling over you wondrous occasions would there be for doubt o oh, earthly creatures o oh, uncultured minds the primal will which of itself is good ne'er from itself the highest goodness moved that much is just which is therewith accordant no good created draws it to itself but it by radiating causes it as o'er her nest a stork moves circling round after the feeding of her little ones and as the one that's fed looks up at her such did the blessed shape become which moved its pinions by so many counsels urged and likewise so did i lift up my brows wheeling around it sang and said as now my notes to thee that understands them not such to you mortals is eternal justice when those bright flamings of the holy spirit had come to rest still in the shape which caused the romans to be honoured by the world none to this kingdom it began again ever ascended without faith in christ either before or after he was nailed upon the tree are but many lo shout christ who at the judgment shall be far less near him than will be such an one who knows not christ christians like these the ethiop will condemn when parted shall the two assemblies be one rich eternally the other poor what will the persians to your rulers say when lying open they shall see the book wherein all their dispraises are inscribed there will be seen among the deeds of albert that which ere long will move the pen because thereby prague's kingdom will become a waste there will be seen the woe which on the same he who shall perish by a boar-skin blow bringeth about by falsifying coin there will be seen the pride and thirsty greed which makes the scot and englishman so mad that neither can remain within his bounds one will see there the easy life and lust of him of spain and of bohemia too who neither of them knew nor cared for valour one will see there marked with a single eye the virtues of jerusalem's lame king whereas an m will mark the contrary one will see there the greed and cowardice of him who ruleth or the isle of fire where once anchises ended his long life and to explain his insignificance his record will consist of shortened words which in a little space will notice much and there to each and all will be revealed the foul deeds of his uncle and his brother who two crowns and a noble line disgraced and he of portugal and he of norway will there be known as also russia's prince who in an ill hour 
saw venetia's coin o oh, happy hungary if she no more shall let herself be wronged happy navarre if with her girding hills she arm herself and both these should believe that nicosia and famagosta as a proof of this are wailing now and raging at their beast because he does not differ from the rest paradiso twenty the sixth heaven jupiter the happiness of justice just princes faith and salvation predestination when he who sheddeth light on all the world so far below our hemisphere descends that daylight fades away on every side the sky once lighted up by him alone is quickly rendered visible again by many lights whereof one only shines and i this happening in the sky recalled when silent in the blessed beak became the standard of the world and of its leaders for brighter far those living lights commenced songs which have fled and fallen from my mind o oh, thou sweet love that with a smile dost cloak thee how ardent in those flutes didst thou appear whose only breath was that of holy thoughts after those precious and pellucid jewels wherewith i saw the sixth great light and gemmed had brought to silence their angelic chimes i seemed to hear the murmur of a brook which flowing limpid down from rock to rock reveals the abundance of its mountain springs and as a sound takes from a citron's neck its form even as the air that enters it doth from the vent hole of a shepherd's pipe so all delay of waiting laid aside that murmur of the eagle mounted up along its neck as if it hollow were a voice it there became and through its beak it issued forth in words such as the heart whereon i wrote them down was longing for that part of me which sees and braves the sun in mortal eagles it began again must now be looked upon attentively for of the fires wherewith i shape me those wherewith the eye is sparkling in my head the highest are of all their ordered grades he that as pupil in the middle shines was once the singer of the holy spirit who bore the ark about from town to town he now knows how deserving was his song so far as it resulted from his will by the reward proportioned to its merit of five that make a circle for my brow the spirit nearest to my beak was he who comforted the widow for her son he now knows by his personal experience of this sweet life and of its opposite how dear it costs one not to follow christ in the circumference of which i speak he that comes next upon the rising ark delayed his death by genuine repentance he now knows that eternal justice brooks no change whenever worthy prayers below to-morrow's make of that which was to-day's the one who follows with the laws and me with good intentions which produced bad fruits made himself greek by ceding to the shepherd he now knows that the ill from his good deed derived is not a cause of harm to him although thereby the world may be destroyed he whom thou seest in the downward arc the william was for whom that country mourns which weeps because its charles and frederick live he now knows how heaven loves a righteous king and by his splendours glow reveals it still who 
in the erring world below would think that Ripheus, the trojan was the fifth among the holy lights which form this curb he now knows many of the things the world is impotent to see in grace divine although his sight discerneth not its depths like a young lark which as it soars through space first sings and then is silent satisfied with the last sweetness which contented her such seemed to me the image of the seal of that eternal pleasure by whose will each thing becometh what it is and though with reference to my doubt up there i was as glass is to the colour which it clothes it could not bear to bide its time in silence but by the very force of its own weight urged from my mouth the words what things are these whereat i saw a glorious feast of sparkling thereafter with its eye the more enkindled the blessed sign in order not to keep me in wondering suspense replied to me i see that thou believest all these things because i say them but dost not see how and therefore though believed him they are hidden thou dost as one who fully knows a thing by name but cannot see just what it is unless another make it manifest regnum caelorum suffers violence from burning love and from a living hope which vanquishes the will divine though not as man or cometh man but conquers it because it willeth to be overcome and so though vanquished by its goodness wins the first life in the eyebrow and the fifth cause thee to be amazed because therewith thou seest the region of the angels painted they did not issue gentiles from their bodies as thou dost think but christians with firm faith one in the feet that were to suffer one in those that had for one to claim his bones came back from hell where no one ever wills the good again and this was the reward of living hope of living hope which put its trust in prayers addressed to god to raise him that thus his will might have a chance to act the glorious soul i speak of when the flesh had been regained wherein he stayed not long believed in him who had the power to help him and through belief so warmed to genuine love that he was worthy at his second death to come to this festivity the other through grace from so profound a spring distilled that never hath the eye of any creature reached its first wave set all his love below on righteousness hence god from grace to grace to our redemption which is still to be opened his eyes he hence believed in it and afterward endured no more the stench of paganism and for it he rebuked those who perverted were and those three ladies thou sawest at the right wheel of the car in lieu of baptism were as sponsors for him more than a thousand years ere baptism was o thou predestination how remote are thy foundations from the sight of those who do not see the first cause as a whole and ye o mortals keep yourselves in check when judging men for we who god behold know not as yet all those that are elect unpleasant is such ignorance to us because our good is in this good refined that what is willed by god we also will thus then by that divinely pictured image to make the shortness of my vision clear a pleasant medicine was granted me and as a skilful sithen player makes the strings vibration follow a good singer whereby the song acquires more power to please even so while it was speaking i recall that both those blessed lights i then beheld as when in winking eyes concordant are moving their flamelets 
to the eagle's words. End of chapter 68《69 of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Paradiso 21 The Seventh Heaven saturn the happiness of contemplation the golden ladder predestination saint peter damian and now mine eyes upon my lady's face were fixed again and therewith all my mind which from all other objects had withdrawn. Nor was she smiling then, but should I smile, she said, addressing me, like Semele wouldst thou become when she to ashes turned, because my beauty which along the stairs of this eternal palace brighter burns as thou hast seen the higher we ascend is so resplendent that thy mortal strength at its effulgence were it not restrained would be as is a bough which lightning rends up to the seventh splendour we are raised which now beneath the burning lion's breast is raying downward mingled with his strength intently fix thy mind behind thine eyes and cause them to be mirrors of the figure which in this mirror will appear to thee he that should know what in the blessed face the nature of my vision's pasture was when i transferred me to another care would know since one was outweighed by the other how gladly i obeyed my heavenly guide within the crystal which as round the world it whirls bears its illustrious leader's name under whose rule all wickedness lay dead coloured like gold whereon a sunbeam shone a ladder i beheld which so high up ascended that my eye pursued it not I saw, moreover, coming down its steps, so many glowing splendours, that I thought that every star seen shining in the sky had been poured out of it. And even as doors, as is their natural wont when day begins, together move to warm their chilly plumes, and then, without returning, some fly off, and some go back to whence they started first, while others, whirling in a circle, stay. Such was, it seemed to me, the fashion here, within the sparkling throng which came together, whene'er they met upon a certain round, and that which nearest to me there remained, became so bright that in my thoughts I said, I clearly see the love thou showest me. But she, whence I await the how and when 
of silence and of speech keep still hence i against my will do well by asking naught she thereupon who in the sight of him who seeth everything my silence saw said unto me appease thy warm desire and i began my merit doth not make me worthy of thy reply but for the sake of her who granteth me the right to ask make known to me blessed life that art concealed in thine own joy the cause which draweth thee so closely to my side and tell me why that gentle symphony of paradise is silent in this wheel which down below sounds so devoutly through the other spheres thy hearing is as mortal as thy sight it answered me there is no singing here because of that which hinders beatrice from smiling down the holy ladder steps have i so far descended but to give thee a welcome with my words and with the light which mantles me nor hath a greater love caused me to be more ready for as much or more love burns up yonder as those flames reveal to thee but that great charity which makes us ready servants of the council which rules the world allots here as thou seest i well perceive o holy lamp said i how that free love is in this court enough for following the eternal providence but this is what seems hard for me to see why thou alone among thy consorts here predestinated what for just this task no sooner had i come to my last word than like a rapid millstone whirling round the light had of its middle made its centre and then the love within it answered me piercing the light wherein i'm here embosomed a ray of light divine upon me falls whose virtue as it mingles with my sight so lifts me o'er myself that i behold that highest essence whence it emanates hence comes the joy with which i'm flaming now for with my sight as far as it is clear i equalize the clearness of my flame and yet the most enlightened soul in heaven the seraph who hath eyes most fixed on god would not avail to satisfy thy question for what thou askest plumbeth so the depths of god's eternal statute that from all created vision it is cut away and to the mortal world on thy return carry this charge that it presume no more to move its feet towards such a distant goal the mind which shineth here on earth is smoky consider hence how it can do down there what though assumed to heaven it cannot do so all conclusive were his words to me that giving up the question i confined me to asking humbly of him who he was between italy's two seashores cliffs arise not very far from thine own native place so high that thunders peal much lower down and form a lofty ridge called catria neath which a hermitage is consecrate 
whose wont to worship only gives it up. He thus began for me his third address, and then, continuing, said, To serving God I there became so steadfastly devoted, that, feeding upon olive juice alone, I readily endured both heat and cold, and was with thoughts contemplative content. That cloister's wont it was to yield these heavens abundant fruit, but it hath now become so empty that its state must soon be known. In that place I was known as Peter Damien, and shining Peter in Our Lady's house I was upon the Adriatic shore, but little mortal life remained to me when I was sought and forced to take the hat which always passes on from bad to worse. Lean and barefooted Cephas came, and then the Holy Spirit's mighty vessel came, eating the food of any hostelry. Our modern shepherds now on either side need help to prop them help they weigh so much to guide and help to hold them up behind they cover so their palfreys with their cloaks the two beasts walk beneath a single hide oh patience that does tolerate so much. More flamelets at these words I saw descend from step to step, and whirl, and every whirl caused each of them to grow more beautiful, and round this flame they came, and having stopped, uttered so deep a cry that none could here resemble it, nor did I understand its words. Its thunder overcame me so. Paradiso 22 The Seventh Heaven Saturn Saint Benedict The Eighth or starry heaven, the twins. Oppressed with stupor, to my guide I turned, as would a little child who always runs for help to where he most confides, and she, as doth a mother who at once assists her pale and breathless offspring with her voice, whose wont is to assure him, said to me, Knowest thou not that thou art now in heaven, and knowest thou not that all of heaven is holy, and that of good zeal cometh all done here? To what extent the song as well as I, by smiling, would have changed thee, thou canst now imagine, since the cry has shocked thee so. In it, if thou hadst understood its prayers, already were that vengeance known to thee, which thou shalt see before thou die. Our sword which thou shalt see before thou die. Our sword up here cuts nor in haste, nor tardily, save as to one it seems who waits for it with either apprehension or desire. But Turn thyself around toward others now, For many illustrious spirits shalt thou see, If, 
as I tell thee, thou direct thine eyes. Mine eyes I then directed as she pleased, and saw a hundred little spheres which, gathering by mutual rays, each other fairer made. Like one I was, who checks within himself the gold of his desire, and dares not ask so great his fear, lest he may ask too much. The largest and most lustrous of those pearls came forward thereupon to sate my wish concerning it. Within it then I heard. If thou, as I do, couldst behold the love which burns among us here, thy thoughts would be expressed, but lest by waiting thou delay thy lofty aim, I'll answer now the thought which causes thee to so restrain thyself. That mountain on whose slope Casino stands, was once frequented on its top by folk who both deluded were and ill-disposed. And he am I who first up yonder bore the name of him who carried down to earth the truth which here exalteth us so much. And such abundant grace upon me shone that I withdrew the neighbouring villages from that vain worship which seduced the world. These other fires were all contemplatives, men who were kindled by the heat which brings the flowers and fruits of holiness to birth. Here is Macarius, Romuald is here, and here are those, my brethren, who remained in cloisters, and who steadfast kept their hearts. And I to him, the affection shown by thee in talking with me, and the kindliness I see and note in all your burning flames, have opened wide my trust, even as the sun dilates the rose, whene'er its petals ope as widely as they can. Because of this I pray thee, Father, do thou then inform me, if I am worthy to receive such grace, as to behold thee with thy face unveiled? Then, brother, he replied, thy great desire in the last sphere above shall be fulfilled, where all thine others are, and mine as well. Every desire is perfect there, mature and whole. In that sphere only is each part where it has always been for it is not in space, nor turns on poles, and up to it our ladder reaches, and because of this it steals itself away beyond thy ken. Jacob, the patriarch, beheld it stretch thus far its upper portion, when of old, laden with angels, it appeared to him, but from the earth to climb it, no one now removes his feet, and my monastic rule remains but as a means of wasting paper. Walls, which of old an abbey used to be, have now become the dens of thieves, and cows are sacks now, filled with naught but wretched meal. But, heavy usury doth not rebel against god's will 
as much as doth the fruit which renders so insane the hearts of monks for whatsoe'er the church may hold in trust is all for those that ask it in god's name and not for relatives or what is worse so soft the flesh of mortals is that good beginnings do not last as long below as from an oak's until its acorn's birth peter began with neither gold nor silver and i with prayers and fasts began my convent as francis with humility did his and if thou look at each of these beginnings and then consider whither each hath run thou see that what was white hath turned to brown jordan turned backward and the water fleeing when god so willed were much more wonderful to see in fact than succour would be here he thus addressed me to his company thereat returning they together closed then like a whirlwind all were upward wrapped the gentle lady up that ladder's rounds urged me behind them by a sign alone her virtue so overcame my natural weight nor he below where one goes up and down by natural law was motion e'er so swift as to be equal to my pinion's flight so may i reader once again return to that celestial triumph for whose sake i oft bewail my sins and smite my breast thou hadst not drawn away and put thy finger as quickly into fire as i beheld the sign which follows taurus and was in it o oh, glorious stars o oh, like that pregnant art with mighty virtue from which i acknowledge all of my genius whatsoe'er it be with you was born and in your midst was hiding he who was father of all mortal life when first i breathed the tuscan air and then when grace had been bestowed upon me here to enter that high wheel which turns you round your region was the one allotted me to you my sighing soul devoutly prays that it may now acquire the power it needs for that hard task which draws her to itself to ultimate salvation thou art now so near in answer beatrice began that clear should be thine eyes and keen their sight therefore ere further thou in it thyself look downward and behold how great a world i have already set beneath thy feet so that thy heart as joyous as it can may show itself to that triumphant throng which happy comes through this ethereal sphere then with my vision i return through one and all seven spheres and this globe i beheld such that its mean appearance made me smile hence that opinion i approve as best which deems it least and just may he be called who sets his thought on something else latona's daughter i enkindled saw without the shadow which was once the cause of my believing her both rare and dense the countenance hyperion of thy son i here sustained and saw how near to him both maya and dione round him moved and after this the temperance of jove appeared to me between his son and sire and clear the reason for their change of place all 
seven of them were thus revealed to me how great they are how swift and far apart in their abodes the little threshing floor which maketh us so fierce was as a whole revealed to me from hills to river mouths while i was circling with the eternal twins back to the lovely eyes i then turned mine paradiso twenty three the eighth heaven the fixed stars the twins triumphant spirits the son of god the mother of christ even as a bird among the leaves she loves settles upon the nest of her sweet brood throughout the night which hides things from our eyes and them that she may see their longed-for looks and find the food wherewith to nourish them in doing which she deems hard work a pleasure comes forth betimes upon an outer branch and gazing steadfastly with burning love waits for the sun till break of dawn so stood my lady toward that region turned intent neath which the sun appears to show least haste hence i on seeing her absorbed in thought became like one who yearning with desire for other things contents himself with hope but little time elapsed between each when i mean from when i waited till the sky i saw grow more and more suffused with light then beatrice exclaimed behold the hosts of christ's victorious triumph and all the fruit ingathered by the circling of these spheres to me her countenance seemed all on fire and so replete with happiness her eyes that i must pass without describing them as when in cloudless skies the moon is full trivia among those nymphs eternal smiles who deck with light the whole expanse of heaven so i above a thousand thousand lamps beheld a sun which kindled one and all as our sun kindles all the stars on high and through the living light the shining substance was so transparent and so brightly shone upon my face that i endured it not o oh, beatrice thou dear and gentle guide that which o'erwhelms thee is a power she said against which nothing can defend itself this is the wisdom this the virtue is which opened wide the road between heaven and earth which was in olden times so long desired as fire is liberated from a cloud when so dilating that it finds no room and falls against its nature to the earth even so my mind as it became enlarged among those beings issued from itself but what it then became cannot recall open thine eyes and see what now i am such things hast thou perceived that thou art now equipped with power to look upon my smile 
I was like one who, when aroused from sleep, is of a dream aware which he forgets, and tries in vain to bring it back to mind. When I had heard a bidding which deserves such gratitude, that never from the book which holds past records will it be effaced, now to help me all those tongues should speak which polyhymnia and her sisters fed most richly with the sweetest of their milk the thousandth portion of the truth would not be reached even though they sang the holy smile and how it lighted up the holy face hence painting paradise the sacred poem must leap like one who finds his path cut off. But none who to its weighty theme gave thought, and to the mortal shoulder bearing it, would blame it, should it tremble neath its load. No waters for a little boat are these. My daring plough goes cleaving on its way, nor for a pilot who would spare himself. Why doth my countenance enamour thee so much, that to the garden beautiful thou turnst not, which blooms beneath Christ's rays? Here is the rose in which the word divine became incarnate. Here the lilies are whose scent led men to take the righteous path. Thus Beatrice, and I, who for her counsels was wholly ready, gave myself again to fight the battle of the feeble brows. As once my overshadowed eyes beheld a field of flowers in a ray of sunlight which through a riven cloud was shining clear thus many a throng of splendours saw i now illumined from on high by burning rays but not the source of their refulgent light o oh, kindly virtue who dost thus impress them thou didst uplift thyself to give mine eyes which were not strong yet greater room to see the name of that fair flower which i invoke each morn and evening too forced all my mind to turn its gaze upon the greatest fire but when in both mine eyes the magnitude and splendour of that living star was painted which vanquishes up there as one down here a torch formed ring-wise like a crown descended from midmost heaven and girdling her about around her world whatever melody sounds sweetest here on earth and to itself most strongly draws the soul would seem a peal of thunder breaking from a cloud if measured by the music of the lyre with which that lovely sapphire crowned itself whereby en sapphired glows the brightest heaven angelic love am i and circle round the exalted gladness breathing from the womb which was the hostelry of our desire and i shall whirl around it lady of heaven until thy son thou follow and diviner render the loftiest sphere by entering it the circling melody thus closed itself as with a seal and all the other lights may mary's name resound the royal robe of all the convolutions of the world 
which burneth most, and by the breath and ways of God is quickened with the greatest life, had its internal shore so far above us, that where I was, its semblance was not yet revealed to me. Mine eyes hence could not follow the flame which, crammed, behind its offspring rose. And as a child who, having had its milk, stretches its little arms up toward its mother, urged by the love which outwardly flames forth. Thus each of those white spirits with its flame stretched up in such a way that its deep love for Mary was made manifest to me. Thereafter they remained there in my presence, singing, O Queen of Heaven, so tenderly that its delight hath never left me since. O oh, how abundant is the store heaped up in those most wealthy coppers which were once good husbandmen for sowing seed below, here living on it they enjoy the treasure which weeping in their exile they acquired in babylon where gold was left untouched here triumphs subject to the exalted son of god and mary in his victory together with the councils old and new he who of such great glory holds the keys. Paradiso 24 The Eighth, or Starry Heaven The Twins Saint Peter examines Dante on faith. Oh, fellowship, elected to the banquet of that blessed lamb, who feedeth you so well, that ever sated is your appetite, since, by the grace of God, this man enjoys a foretaste of what falleth from your table, or ever death have set his time for him, heed his immense desire, and on him shed a little of your dew, ye from the source for ever drink, whence cometh what he thinks thus beatrice thereat those happy spirits arrange themselves in spheres on steady poles emitting brilliant flames as comets do and even as wheels within the works of clocks so turn for one who heeds them that the first seems quiet while the last appears to fly even so since at a different speed they whirled those carol dancers whether swift or slow permitted me to estimate their wealth from that one which i deemed of greatest beauty i saw a fire so happy issue forth that none it left of greater brightness there. Then around Beatrice she turned three times with so divine a song that even my fancy repeats it not for me, and so my pen takes a leap forward and I write it not, for our imagination much more speak too bright a colour is to paint such folds. O oh, holy sister mine, who so devoutly dost pray to us that by thine ardent love withdrawest me from yonder lovely sphere, when once at rest again that blessed fire turned toward my lady with his voice, which spoke, as I have said, 
and she replied to him o oh, thou eternal life of that great man to whom of this great joy our lord bequeathed the keys which he brought down test thou this man as pleases thee on questions light and grave pertaining to the faith which formerly enabled thee to walk upon the sea if well he love well hope and well believe is not conceded from thee because thy sight is thither turned where all is seen depicted but since this realm hath through the true faith won its citizens tis well that to its glory it should befall him now to speak of it even as a bachelor equips himself nor speaks until the master states the question to furnish proofs but not decide the same so i while she was speaking armed myself with every proof that i might ready be for such a questioner and such confession speak now good christian and declare thyself what then is faith thereat i raised my brow toward the bright light from which these words were breathed and then i turned around toward beatrice and she by rapid signals bade me pour the water forth from my internal fount the grace which grants that i confess myself before the first centurion i began cause my conceptions to be well expressed and i continued as the truthful pen of thy dear brother father who with thee set rome upon the right way wrote of it faith is the substance of the hoped-for things and the evidence of those that are not seen this seems to me its essence then i heard thou thinkest right if well thou understand why with the substances he placed it first and with the evidences afterward thereat i answered those deep truths which here are freely making themselves known to me from eyes down yonder are so far concealed that their existence lies in faith alone and thereupon the lofty hope is based it therefore takes the nature of a substance and from this faith one needs must syllogize without the help of any other sight it therefore assumes the nature of an evidence and then i heard if thus were understood all that for doctrine is acquired below there'd be no room there for the sophist's mind these words were breathed from that enkindled love which added them already have this coin's alloy and weight been very well examined but tell me if thou hast it in thy purse i therefore yes so shining and so round that nothing in its coinage makes me doubt then issued from the deep light shining there whence did this precious jewel come to thee where on all virtues else are based and i the abundant showers of the holy spirit outpoured upon the parchments old and new a syllogism have formed which prove it true so clearly to me that all other proofs seem inconclusive when compared with it the ancient premise and the new i then heard asked which so conclusive are to thee why dost thou take them for the word of god and i 
the proof which showeth me the truth are those great works which followed works for which nature ne'er heated iron nor anvil smote then i was answered say what makes thee sure that these works e'er occurred the very thing which calls for proof none other tells thee so if to christianity the world was turned i said unhelped by miracles then this is such that not a hundredth of the rest for thou didst pour and fasting go afield to sow the goodly plant which was of old a vine and now has turned into a thorn this ending thus the high and holy court resounded through the spheres a god we praise sung to the melody they sing up there that barren them who thus from branch to branch had tested me and now had led me on until the final leaves were drawing near began again the grace which with thy mind holds loving converse hitherto hath oped thy mouth as it should be hence i approve of that which it hath uttered but it now behoves thee say what thou believest in and whence it has been offered to thy faith o holy father spirit that dost now behold what thou didst so believe that thou didst outrun toward the tomb far younger feet i thus began thou have me now reveal the essential part of my sincere belief and thou dost also ask the cause of it and i reply in one god i believe soul and eternal who himself unmoved moves all the heavens with love and with desire and i for so believing have not only proofs physical and metaphysical but that truth also yieldeth me its proof which hence rains down through moses psalms and prophets and through the gospel and through you who wrote after the flaming spirit made you shepherds and i believe in three eternal persons and these to be one essence so both one and trine that they can be conjoined by are and is of the divine profound estate whereto i now refer the teaching of the gospel sets many times the seal upon my mind this is the fountain-head and this the spark which after spreads into a living flame and in me glows as stars do in the sky as when a lord hearing what pleases him rejoices in the news his servant brings and takes him to his arms when he is silent so giving me his blessing as he sang that apostolic light at whose command i spoke when i had ceased thrice girdled me so greatly had i pleased him by my words End of chapter sixty nine Chapter Seventy of Jerusalem to Revelations, a Quartet of Spiritual Experience, by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Paradiso, Twenty-Five. The Eight or starry heaven the twins triumphant spirits st james examines dante on hope 
if ere it happen that the sacred poem to which both heaven and earth have so set hand that it hath made me lean for many years or come the fierceness which against me bars the lovely fold where as a lamb i slept though hostile to the wolves that give it war then with another voice and other fleece a poet i'll return and at the font of mine own baptism take the laurel crown for there i entered first into the faith which makes souls known to god and peter later because of my belief thus wreathed my brow then toward us after this there moved a light out of the sphere from which the first fruit issued which of his vicars christ once left behind and full of joy my lady said to me look look behold the baron for whose sake men go to see galicia down on earth as when a dove alighteth near its mate each by its circling and its cooing shows the other its affection thus i saw one great and glorious prince the other great and praise the food which sateth them up there but when their mutual gratulation ceased before me each in silence stopped and flamed so brightly that my face was forced to bow then smiling beatrice illustrious life by whom the generous liberality of our basilica was once described let hope resound upon these heavenly heights thou knowest that thou didst stand for it as oft as jesus showed most brightness to the three lift up thy head and reassure thyself for all that cometh from the mortal world up hither must be ripened in our rays this comfort reached me from the second fire hence to the hills i raised mine eyes which erst had bowed them down by their excessive weight since of his graciousness our emperor wills that thou before thy death shouldst face his counts in his most secret hall that having seen the truth in this our court thou mayst confirm both in thyself and other souls the hope which rightfully enamours men on earth say what it is and how therewith thy mind is blossoming and whence it came to thee thus further did the second light proceed and that kind soul who to so high a flight had let the feathers up my wings forestalled my answer thus no child of greater hope hath the church militant as in the sun is written which irradiates all our band it therefore hath been granted him to come from egypt to jerusalem and see or ere the period of his warfare end thine other two requests made not for knowledge but so that he may carry back with him to what extent this virtue pleases thee i leave to him for they will not be hard for him nor matter for self-praise to these let him reply and may god's grace assist him even as in that wherein he expert is a pupil readily and willingly answers his teacher that his worth be shown hope is i said a steadfast expectation of future glory which by grace divine and by preceding merit is produced this light 
from many stars comes down to me. But he into my heart instilled it first, who was the greatest leader's greatest bard. For let them hope in thee that know thy name, the latter in his Theody declares, and if he have my faith, who knows it not? Then thou, with his instilling, didst so greatly instil that hope in me with thine epistle, that filled with it, I pour your rain on others. While I was speaking, in the living bosom of that great fire, a bright effulgence quivered quickly, and often like a lightning flash, and then it breathed. The love, wherewith I still warm to the virtue which once followed me, till with the palm I issued from the field, would have me give my breath to thee again, that dost therein delight, and I am pleased to have thee say what promise hope affords thee. And I, the scriptures, both the new and old, the goal establish of the souls whom God hath made his friends, this points it out to me. Isaiah says that each in his own land will in a double garment be arrayed, and his own land is this sweet life of ours, and in a more explicit way thy brother makes this same revelation manifest to us, whereof the snow-white robes he treats. After these words had ended, first was heard above us. Let them hope in thee, whereto all of the carols made reply, and then a light became so brilliant in their midst, that if the crab had such a crystal star, winter would have a month of one sole day. And as a happy maiden rising goes, in honour of the bride, to join the dance, and not for any failing on her part. Even so I saw the splendour brighter groom approach the two who in a wheel were turning, as it behooved the ardour of their love. Into the song and music then it entered, and on the three my lady kept her gaze, silent and motionless as would a bride. This is the one who on his breast reclined, who is our pelican, and from the cross selected was to hold the filial office. Even thus my lady spoke, but no more after did her words withdraw her eyes from fixed attention than before. Even as is he who gazes at the sun and tries to see it partially eclipsed, and who, because of seeing, groweth blind. Such I became before that latest fire, till this was said. Why dost thou blind thyself to see a thing which hath no being here? Earth is my body on the earth, and there will with the others stay, until our number shall with the eternal purpose correspond with both their garments in the blessed cloister are those two lights alone which hither rose and this shalt thou take back unto your world stilled was the flaming circle at these words and with them the sweet mixture which was formed out of the music of the threefold breath as from fatigue or danger to escape oars which had stroked the water just before, are at a whistle sound, all brought to rest. Ah, how disturbed in mind I then became, when I turned round to look at Beatrice, because I could not see her now, though close to her I was, and in the happy world. Paradiso 26 The Eighth or Starry Heaven the twins st john examines dante on love adam 
while I was frightened by my loss of vision from the refulgent flaming which had quenched it, a breath which caused me to give heed came forth and said, Till thou regain the sense of sight which thou hast spent by gazing up at me, tis well that thou make up for it by speech. Therefore begin to speak, and say toward what thy soul aspires, and also bear in mind that sight in thee is lost but not destroyed, because the lady who is leading thee through this divine expanse hath in her look the power possessed by Ananias' hand. At her own pleasure, soon or late, I said, let the cure reach the eyes which portals were, when with that fire she entered, wherewith all I ever burn. The good which sates this court is Alpha and Omega of all scriptures, love reads to me, in tones, or low, or loud. And that same voice, which rid me of the fear, the sudden blinding blaze had given me, inspired me with a wish to speak again, and said, Thou surely through a finer sieve must pass thy meaning. It behooves thee say who toward so great a target turned thy bow. And I, by philosophic arguments, and by authority which from up here descends, must such a love need stamp itself on me. Because the good, when understood as such, enkindles love, and all the greater love, the more it holds of goodness in itself. Hence, to that being who so perfect is, that every good which lies outside of him is nothing but a beam of his own radiance. More than to any other must the mind in love be moved of all who recognize the truth on which this argument is based. He, to mine understanding, shows this truth, who demonstrates to me the primal love of all the sempiternal substances. The truthful author's voice revealeth it, when, speaking of himself, he saith to Moses, All goodness shall I have thee see. Thou, too, revealest it to me, when thou begins the loud announcement which o'er other trumps heralds on earth the secrets of this state. Thereat I heard. By human understanding, and by authorities therewith concordant, the sovereign of thy loves is turned to God. But further say, if other chords thou feel, attract thee toward him, so that thou mayst say how many of love's teeth are biting thee. Not hidden was the purpose of Christ's eagle, nay, rather, I perceived to what he wished to lead my love's profession to declare. Hence, all those bitings, I began again, which possibly could turn one's heart to God, have with my love of him concurrent been, for both the world's existence and mine own, the death which he endured that I might live, and that which all the faithful hope as I, together with the mentioned living knowledge, have drawn me from the sea of wrong desires, and set me on the shore of righteous love. I love the several leaves wherewith enleaved, is all the garden of the eternal gardener, according to the good he giveth each. As soon as I had ceased, a most sweet song throughout all heaven resounded, and my lady said, Holy, 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 with the rest. And even as at a vivid flash of light, one wakes from sleep, because one's visual power turns toward the ray 
which moves from coast to coast, and as the one awakened shrinketh back from that which he hath seen, so senseless is his sudden waking till reflection helps. Thus Beatrice drove all motes from mine eyes by the mere radiance of her own, whose light shone further than a thousand miles away. I, therefore, saw far better than before. Then, since I was amazed at it, I asked about a fourth light I beheld with us. My lady, then, in yonder radiant light, the first soul, which the first power e'er created, is gazing joyfully upon his maker. Even as a bough which, while the wind is passing, bends its top down, and then uplifts itself by innate strength which raises it again, even so did I, amazed, while she was speaking. And then the wish to speak, wherewith I burned, made me feel reassured, and I began. O fruit that wast alone produced when ripe, O ancient father, thou to whom each bride is both a daughter and a daughter-in-law, I beg thee as devoutly as I can to speak to me. Thou seest my wish, hence I, that I may quickly hear thee tell it not. At times a covered animal so stirs that its own movement needs must be revealed because its covering corresponds to it so likewise did the first of souls display to me through that which covered it how gladly he came to give me pleasure then it breathed without its being told to me by thee Better do I perceive what thou desirest, than thou perceivest what thou knowest best. For I behold it in the truthful mirror, which of itself makes other things a likeness, though naught makes it a likeness of itself. Thou fain wouldst hear how long it is since God in that high garden placed me, where this lady prepared thee for so long a flight of stairs, how long it was a pleasure to mine eyes, the real occasion for the mighty wrath, and what the tongue which I both used and made. Now, son, the tasting of the tree was not itself the cause of such a banishment, but only the transgression of the bound. In that place, whence thy lady started Virgil, I, hence, for this assembly longed for thousand, three hundred revolutions of the sun and two. And him I saw return again to all his highways like nine hundred times and thirty while I still abode on earth. The tongue I spoke had quite extinct become a long time ere the people under Nimrod attempted their unfinishable task. For never was a product of man's reason apt to endure for human appetite renews itself according to the heavens. That Mankind speak, a work of nature is. But if in this or that way, nature then leaves you to do according to your pleasure. Ere I descended to the grieving place below, the highest good, from whom proceeds the joy which swathes me, was on earth called I. L was he called thereafter. This must be, for human custom is, as on a bough a leaf, which goeth, as another comes. Upon the mount, which highest from the sea ascends, I lived, in innocence and sin, from the first hour until the one which follows, 
after the sun's first quadrant change, the sixth. Paradiso, twenty-seven, the eighth, or starry heaven, St. Peter's invective, the ninth heaven, primum mobile, the angelic hierarchies. Glory to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All paradise in such a way began that its sweet song intoxicated me. What I was seeing seemed to me a smile as of the universe, for through both sight and hearing my intoxication entered. O oh, joy! O oh, gladness inexpressible! O oh, life by love and peace completely filled! O oh, wealth no longer longed for but assured! Before mine eyes the torches four remained on fire, and that which was the first to come began to grow more luminous, and such in its appearance it became as Jove would come to be, if he and Mars were birds, and interchanged the plumage of their wings. The providence which there above assigns both turn and office, silence had imposed upon the blessed choir on every side, when, if I change my colour, marvel not, I heard him say, for even while I am speaking, thou shalt behold all these change colour too. He who on earth usurps my place, my place which in the sight of God's own Son is vacant, of my burial ground hath made a sewer of blood and stench, whereby the pervert who fell from hence is there below appeased. The whole of heaven I then beheld or spread with that same hue which colours clouds both morn and evening when the sun lies opposite, and as a modest lady who feels sure of her own self, but at another's fault, on merely hearing of it timid grows. So Beatrice changed her appearance then, and such as hers, I think, was heaven's eclipse, what time the sovereign power suffered pain. Thereat his words proceeded, in a voice so changed from what had been its wont itself, that his appearance had no further change. The bride of Christ was not by my blood fed, nor by the blood of Linus, nor by that of Cletus, to be used for gain of gold, but for the winning of this happy life, both Sextus, Pius, Urban, and Calixtus, after much lamentation, shed their blood. T'was not our purpose that upon the right of our successors one part of the folk of Christ should sit, and on the left another, nor that the keys bestowed in trust on me should on a banner come to be an emblem, and a warfare wage on those that were baptized, nor I become an image on a seal for privileges venal and deceptive, which often make me blush and flame with wrath. Rapacious wolves disguised in shepherds' clothes are seen in all the pastures from up here. Vengeance of God, why art thou quiet still? Men of Cahors and Gascons even now prepare to drink our blood. O oh, good beginning, to what vile ending thou art doomed to fall. But that high providence which saved for Rome, through Scipio's help, the glory of the world, will quickly succour her as I conceive, and thou, my son, who for thy mortal weight art to return below, open thy mouth and hide not that which I do not conceal. Even as our atmosphere lets fall great flakes of frozen vapour, when the horn of heaven's she-goat is in conjunction with the sun, so I beheld the sky grow beautiful, and upward flaked with those triumphant flames, which for a while 
had sojourned with us there. My sight was following their forms, and followed till the mid-space, by reason of its vastness, prevented it from passing further on. Thereat the lady, who had seen that freed I was from gazing up, said, Lower now thine eyes, and see how far thou hast revolved. I saw that, since the hour when I had first looked downward, I had moved through all the arc the first of climates makes from mid to end. Past Cadiz, hence, all you see's insane track I saw, and nearly to the seashore where Europa made herself so sweet a load. And of this little threshing floor much more would have been shown me, but the sun was circling beneath my feet, a sign or more removed. And my enamoured mind, which in my lady always takes pleasure, more than ever now was burning to restore mine eyes to her. And if, or art, or nature e'er made baits in human flesh, or in its painted forms, to catch men's eyes, and capture thus their minds, they all together would seem naught, compared to that divine delight which on me shone, when to a smiling face I turned around. The virtue, therefore, which that look vouchsafed, removed me from fair leader's lovely nest, and urged me on into the swiftest heaven. Its nearest and its most exalted parts are all so uniform, I cannot tell which Beatrice selected as my place. But she who saw my wish began to speak, and smiled so happily that God appeared to be rejoicing in her countenance. The nature of the world, which quiet holds the centre, and around it moves the rest, beginneth here as from its starting point, and this heaven hath no other where than in the mind divine, where kindled is the love which turns it, and the power itself rains down. One circles light, and love encircle it, as if the other heaven, and he alone this precinct understands who girdeth it. Its motion is not measured by another, but all the others are by this, as ten is measured by its half and by its fifth. And now, how time in such a flower-pot can have its hidden roots, and in the rest its leaves, hereafter can be manifest to thee. O thou cupidity, that neath thyself dost sink all mortal so, that none avails out of thy waters to withdraw his eyes. The will in human beings blossoms well, but constant rains turn into blighted fruit the genuine plum, and faith and innocence are found in children only, but take flight before their cheeks are covered up with hair. While still a prattler, one observeth fast, who, later, when his tongue is free, devours under whatever moon, whatever food. And one who, while still lisping, loves and hearkens to his mother, later on, when speaking well, would see her in her grave. Thus, in the primal sight becometh black the white face of the lovely child of him who brings the morn and leaves the eventide. And that thou marvel not at this, recall that there is none on earth who rules, and hence the human family goes thus astray. And yet, ere January's month become wholly unwintered, through the hundredth part neglected there below, these upper spheres shall roar so, that the storm so long foreseen will turn the sterns to where the prows are now, so that the fleet will run its course aright, and good fruit follow on the blossom's flower. 
End of chapter 70